The purpose of the new year is to have a new you. The greatest love of all is the love of God for you. Why are poor people poor? Number one. Number two, why serve the poor? And number three, how do you serve the poor? Let me begin with question number one. Why are poor people poor? Alam nyo, maraming taong nagsasabi sa akin ng ganito. Minsan, na, na ano ako, nababagabag ako. Pag sinabing, Brother Bo, ba't ka tumutulong sa may hirap? Bakit? Eh, mga tamad yan. Sino sa inyo, be honest with me, narinig nyo na yun. Tamad ang mga mahihirap. Tas ng kamay. You heard it from someone, from a friend. Alam nyo, brothers and sisters, na, napabagabag ako kasi tatuningin mo naman, bakit naman ganyan ang, ang turing mo sa mahihirap? Tamad. Ay, nako, yung katulong ko, tamad. Yan. O kaya, ay, nako, yung pinsan ko na laging humihingi ng pera sa akin, tamad. Yan. Ma- anecdotal. Pakisabi nga, anecdotal ibig sabihin kukuha ng isang tao tapos gagawing representative ng buong mga mahihirap na tao I want you to know that I've been working with the poor almost all my life I, I work in a slum area I do ministry to work with orphans I do ministry work with all sorts of poor people I'll tell you with my experience I've noticed and I've recognized this the poor people that I work with these are people who work harder I was working in a slum area one time and I was doing work with some kids and some teenagers. The teenagers I was working with, they were working 16 hours a day. 16 hours a day. And yet, they were still poor. Alam nyo, parang ganito yan eh. Halimbawa, may lagnat ka. Punta ka sa doktor. Sinabi, Dok, may lagnat ako. Biglang sasabi ng doktor sa'yo, hindi ka tinignan, walang stethoscope, walang temperature, walang tanong-tanong. Sasabi niya sa'yo, ay nako, na, na, naulanan ka siguro. Ha, Dok? Naulanan ka? Hindi, hindi ako naul- na- naulanan ka. Bakit naman alam mo, na alam mo, Dok? Kasi yung kapatid ko, naulanan, nagkaroon ng lagnat. Ang lagnat, maraming dahilan. Tama? UTI, dengue, flu, nabalian. You got what I'm saying? Isang libong dahilan, bakit kami lagnat? Ganun rin yung kahirapan. Ang kahirapan, maraming dahilan. Maari! Maari, maaring tamad yung isa, dalawa, tatlong mahirap. Tama? Pero maraming dahilan kung bakit mahirap ang isang tao. Nabuntis nung teenager. Nag-drugs. Nabarkada. Hindi na nag-aral. Wrong choices. Pakisabi, wrong choices. Pangalawang dahilan kung bakit mahirap. They're psychologically trapped in a poverty mentality. And, and I've always, I've, I've always seen this in, in many people. Mahirap lang ako. Ay talaga, ga, pabilya ko mahirap. Ay nako, habang buhay maging mahirap ako. Identity nila mahirap. Number three, they live in a poverty environment, culture, and religion. It was Tony Maloto who was telling me we were walking in Bagong Silang. 500,000 people live in Bagong Silang. It's the biggest squatter area we have in Metro Manila. Habang naglalakad kami doon, sinabi ni Tony sa akin, Brother Bo, tingnan mo yung mga maliliit na bata na to. Mga lalaking bata, taningin mo sila, what, what is their ambition in life? Ang sagot nila, karamihan sila, sasabihin nila, gusto ko po maging tricycle driver. That is their highest ambition. Bakit? Walang role models. Tama? Tapos sinabi niya sa akin, tanayin mo yung mga batang babae naman. Ano? What is their ambition in life? Ang sasagutin sa'yo, gusto ko, ito, nakakalungkot, gusto ko maging dancer sa Wawawi. Totoo yan. Yun ang highest ambition. Bakit? Environment. Walang role model. And that's what we need to supply. 
religion. We, are, we have a religion, a brand of religion that says, pag gusto mong lumapit kay Lord, mas mabuting mahirap ka. Pag gusto mong maging banal, kailangan mahirap ka. We have a certain strain in our religion that preaches that. And we need to change that. It's the same strain of religion that you find in Latin American countries. The, the, the Catholic countries who are very poor. We need to change that. Amen? Amen? Parang, parang, hindi kayo nag-agree? Naniniwala ba kayo doon? Amen? Number four. Importante to. They are financially foolish. We need to educate people on how to become, how to be able to manage their money well. Alam niyo ang problema sa Pilipinas? One of the problems, I believe, uh, there are many problems, but one problem among the poor is that they have no access to money. Pag gusto nilang magsimula ng isang negosyo, hihiram sila saan? Hasan sila hihiram? Pakisagaw, pakisigaw. Sa 5-6. Tama? Sa 5-6. And, and when you have... What is 5-6? It's 20% interest. Saan? Minsan, once a week, hihiram sila ng isang libo. Today, next week, magbabayad sila ng 1,200. 20% a week. You, you multiply that by 52. That's 960, I think, uh, percent. It's very, very high. And that's why the, the poor remain poor. They're, they're financially foolish. They need to find a way by which they could get financing. And, and I really believe right now there are many organizations that provide micro-lending at very low interest. And that's, that's one of the solutions to poverty. Answer number five. They're victims of unjust structures. Pakibasa. What do I mean? Ito, society has a golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rule. You agree with this? This is reality. Pakisabi, reality. Reality yan. Sino man ang may ginto, yun ang gagawa ng batas. Who dies in the war? The poor soldiers? Answer me. Not the politicians who initiated the war. Yes? Who gets jailed? The poor, not the mastermind. Tama? Ilan taon na namatay at pinatay si Ninoy Aquino. Nahuli na ba ang mastermind? Pero ilan taon nang nasa, nasa, nasa jail yung mga sundalo. Tama? You know, who gets jailed? The poor, not the mastermind. Who loses his job pag nag, nagsara ang kompanya? The poor, not the businessman, not the owner. We, let everybody say that. Reality. Yan ang katotohanan. Yan ang reality. That's the world that we live in. And that's why the poor are poor. And because of that, I answer question number two. Why serve the poor? Everybody say that. Answer number one. Pakibasa. Because they need our help and many are victims. According to World Vision, 77% of Filipino families are living in poverty. 20% of Filipino families are living below the food threshold poverty. Ibig sabihin, 20% ng mga tao, isa sa limang Pilipino, nagugutom araw-araw. 60% of children drop out of school due to poor brain development. Bakit poor brain development dahil sa malnourishment? 1.82 million Filipino youth aged 15 to 24 are out of school. Not only, not only 1.82 million Filipino kids are out of school, even those in school, especially public school systems, may mga iilang mga public school magagandang pag, pag, pagtakbo. But I remember I was, I was helping a group of orphans going to public school and, and tuwang-tuwa ako na nag attend yung mga orphans sa public school and then I was talking to one of the orphans and I said, um, Anak, ilan ang, ilan ang studyante sa klase mo? Sinabi niya, 95. 95 sa isang klase. Talaga? 95? Oo. Anong ginagawa niyo sa school? Siguro mga first 25 minutes uh, attendance. Isang oras yung klase, 
Pero yung first 25 minutes, uh, attendance. You know, it, it was, I was telling myself, how can a teacher teach 95 kids in one classroom? But then, that's, that's the picture of many public schools in the country today. My answer for number two is this. Serving the poor is a core definition of a holy life. Here's the truth. We cannot serve God. We cannot love God. We cannot worship God if we do not love the poor, if we do not serve the poor. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 5, it says together, He who mocks the poor blasphemes his Maker. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, it says together, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Do you want to have treasure in heaven? Taas ang kamay, sino gusto magkaroon ng treasure in heaven? Then you do what the Bible says. You love the poor. You serve the poor. You give to the poor. Here's the story of my library. Yung bahay ko po may library. Correction. Yung library ko may bahay. Maraming maraming libro. Isang libong libro. Binilang ko. 17 books are on prayer. 16 books are on leadership. 34 books na binili ko are on family life. 18 books are on church, growth, evangelization. 38 books are on the spiritual life. Prayer, etc. Alam niyo, brothers and sisters, three books are on loving the poor. There, there is an imbalance. Nakuha niyo yun? Yung parang ang focus ng mga tao, kung gusto mo maging banal, kung gusto mo maging malapit kay Lord, abay magdasal ka, mag-Bible ka, mag-attend ka ng prayer meeting, mag-simba ka, mag ka, puro doon ang focus kung gusto mo yung banal. Nakakalimutan nila na kung gusto mo maging lumapit kay Lord, kailangan mahalin mong mahihirap. Nakuha niyo sinasabi ko? Pakisabi nga, imbalance. Pwedeng magkwento? Merong isang monk. Nagdadasal siya sa monastery niya sa harapan ng Blessed Sacrament. Araw-araw yun, magdadasal. Habang nagdadasal siya sa Blessed Sacrament, napansin niya yung tabernacle. Alam niyo yung tabernacle? Kahoy yung sa kanya. Luma na. Sinabi niya, Lord, gusto mong gawin kong gold to. Gold tabernacle para sa Blessed Sacrament. Alam niyo, ginawa ng monk, he decided mag-raise ako ng funds para magpagawa ng golden tabernacle. At alam niyo, he started asking friends, yung mga bumibisita sa monastery, sinabi niya, gusto ko magkaroon ng golden tabernacle si Jesus. Bigyan niyo ako ng pera. Sige lang, sige naman. Some people, they would give 100 pesos. Tuwang-tuwa sa, thank you so much. Yung iba, 1,000. Ay, grabe. Yung iba, 10,000. Bihira yun, pero nagpapasalamat talaga siya. Alam nyo, it took him 10 years. 10 years to be able to raise money for a golden tabernacle. Hindi naman pure gold, basta gold-plated na maganda, magmaayos. 10 years siya nag-ipon. After 10 years of collecting money, he was, he was going to go out. Tuwang tuwa siya, sinabi niya, magpapagawa na ako. I will be able to. So he went out. Alam niyo, paglabas niya, nagkaroon ng, nag, nagkaroon ng flood, nagkaroon ng storm, signal number four. Alam niyo, sa, sa baha, many homes were destroyed. Many people began to starve. And he was holding the money for the golden tabernacle. Sinabi niya, paano ba to? Ang daming nagugutom, ang daming bahay na sira. And so he decided, ibibigay ko muna yung may, sa mga mahihirap to. And so he gave his money to those who are starving. He gave his money to those who were affected by the flood. And then after that, he said, Nibale, I will start saving again. So mag-iipun na naman siya. And so he started asking for money again from his friends for his golden tabernacle. And it took him another 10 years. Pagkatapos ng 10 years, yung nakaipun na siya, nagkaroon ng lindol naman. At nung nagkaroon ng lindol, marami na naman na nahirapan sa buhay. Marami na naman nagutom. Marami na naman mga bahay na sira. Sinabi niya, hindi bale, maintindihan ni Lord to. Binigay niya sa mahihirap. Sinabi niya, kawawa naman. Bumili siya na marami na marami pagkain. Binigay niya, binigay niya sa mga nagugutom. 
Tapos sinabi niya, di bali, I'll save again, I'll save again. Kaya lang, after a few months, namatay si Monk. Namatay. Nasa harapan siya ng Diyos. He was before God. And you know, God said, ang unang bati ng Diyos sa kanya, Anak! Thank you ha! Sa tabernacle na ginawa mo para sa akin. Sinabi ng mong, hindi ko nga nagawa eh. Hindi ko nagawa. Sinabi ng Diyos, Anak, mali ka. You built the tabernacle twice. You built it twice. Kasi anak, yung ginawa mo, yung tabernacle ko, yung taong mahihirap, yan yung tabernacle ko, yan yung templo ko. And you built it. You love them. And that's the house that you built for me. Is the story clear? It's a very simple story, but I love the story. You know, my community, the light of Jesus. I think, I was, I was telling this to a group of my friends and some, some of the leaders of the community. I said, alam nyo, I think for the rest of our lives, yung mga building natin, yung mga, yung mga building ng light of Jesus, yung center ng light of Jesus, may, may balak naman tayo, magkaroon tayo ng malaking-malaking center, mal- may balak naman tayo, may plano naman tayo, kaya lang, it will always be simple. It will always be simple because we have a commitment to, to give 50% of our, of our collection, 50% of whatever we receive for our work for the poor. It's just, we've, we've made that decision. Why? We believe that it's essential. If you want to love God, everybody say that, if I want to love God, I need to love the poor. Amen? We go on. Answer number three. Serving the poor is a source of our spiritual blessing. Pakibasa. Here's the truth. The poor need us, but we need the poor more. Proverbs 19 verse 17. Pakibasa. He who has compassion on the poor lends to the Lord, and He will repay him for His good deed. Pag tumulong ka sa mahihirap, yung mahirap na yun, hindi makakabayad sa'yo. Tama? Tama ba ako? Pero si Lord, nakita niya yung ginawa mo sa mahihirap, babayaran ka niya. Amen? At yung bayad ng Diyos, hindi eksakto. Amen? sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi eksakto ang bayad ni Lord. Sobra. Pag binayad ka ng Diyos, sobra. Pag tumulong ka sa mahihirap, parang pinapautang mo ang Diyos. At pag magbayad ang Diyos, may interest. Hindi lang 5-6. God will bless you abundantly. And by their wounds, we are healed, says John Vanier. And I believe that. Sa mga sugat ng mahihirap, tayo'y gumagaling. We are healed from what? Five diseases. Number one, the disease of selfishness. Number two, the disease of self-absorption. Number three, the disease of indifference. Number four, the disease of materialism. Number five, the disease of false Christianity. Question number three. How do you love the poor? Sige nga, Brother Bo, gusto kong mahalin ng mahira. Paano ba yun? Paano ang hira? Magbibigay lang ba ako sa mga pulubi sa daan? Wag. Wag mo gawin yun. Dole outs never work. Alam nyo, pag nagbigay ka lang, you rob them of their dignity. You rob them of their dignity and their self-worth. What you need to do is empower them and equip them. Pakisabi nga, equip, empower. The first thing you've got to do is this. Answer number one. Love the poor by what? Being with the poor. Yung kwento ni Dylan Wilk, tuwang-tuwa ako. When I was talking to him, kinikwento niya, alam niyo si Dylan Wilk, he is the he, he was the, anong tawag doon? The ninth richest man in England below the age of 30. He was a multi-millionaire. He went to the Philippines at the invitation of a friend. Tapos bumisita siya ng mga gawad kalinga together with Tony Meloto. He was moved. He was touched at the villages for the poor. At etong si Dylan Wilk bumalik sa England and he made the decision. Pagbalik niya doon, 
after a few weeks, tumawag siya kay Tony Miloto from England. Tapos sinabi niya, Tony, I was touched by what I saw in the Philippines. I'm going to donate 100,000 pounds. Do donate daw siya. Alam niyo sinabi ni Tony, this is amazing. Tony said, I will not accept your donation. Sinabi ni Bill and he could not understand, what do you mean you won't accept my donation? Sinabi ni Tony, if you really want to love the poor, serve the poor, be with the poor, come to the Philippines for about six months and serve the poor and build homes for the poor using your own hands, not just your money. And so Dylan decided, okay. He went to the Philippines and he stayed for six months, he stayed for one year, he stayed for two years, he stayed for three years. Dylan Wilk married ultimately the daughter of Tony Miloto and, and now he's serving the poor full time through Gawad Kalinga. Again, a miracle. Again, what happens when you love the poor just by your money? Nothing much. You've got to love the poor by being with the poor. By serving the poor. You got what I'm saying? Madali eh. Madali mag-donate. Donation. Madali yun. Hindi. Kailangan, you need to spend time with the poor. And I'm going to encourage you to visit the poor. We've got many ministries of the poor. We, we do have a GK village and you, and you can volunteer there. We do, we do have our, our orphanage uh, through Ray um, Ortega, my friend. And uh, I'm, I'm going to call on them later on. But, but you can visit our, uh, our Anawim, Abandoned Elderly. You can visit the, the Street Kids Ministry under, under Jodine Sola, He Cares Foundation. Answer number two. Love the poor by earning more, living simply, and sharing more. It's okay to earn more. There's no, no problem about earning more. But make a decision that you earn more so that you can share more. Amen? St. John Chrysostom, together. Not to enable the poor to share in our goods is to steal from them and deprive them of life. The goods we possess are not ours, but theirs. Answer number three. Pakibasa. Let me tell you and share with you three people whose lives were changed because of the ministries that I know of that are that we've decided to partner with. Merong isang babae, ang pangalan niya si Helen. She's 42 years old now. Pero alam niyo, 10 years ago, she was a very she had a very difficult life. She was a laundry woman. And 10 years ago, she was earning 50 pesos a day. She had a little baby. Her husband was jobless. Hirap na hirap sila sa buhay. A few years later, she discovered this long line of children sa Project 6. It was a feeding center. It was run by my friend, Jodine Sola. You know, Helen, Helen started going to the feeding center and Jodine, my friend, started giving a Bible study for the poor. And so she, she, she attended this. After a few years, Jodine decided to start a micro-lending program. Magpapahiram siya sa mga hihiram. For 70 days, he will lend the poor 2,000 pesos. Alam nyo, ikaw at ako, sasabihin natin, 2,000 lang. Ang late naman. But for the poor, that's all they need sometimes to start a little business. And so Helen was lent 2,000 pesos for 70 days. The interest was very small compared to 5-6. And she was only to pay Jodine 31 pesos and 50 centavos every single day. Alam nyo, nakapagsimula siya ng isang maliit na negosyo, isang maliit na tindahan. Nung nakabayad na siya ng 2,000, papahiramin na siya ni, ni Jodine ng 4,000 pesos. Palaki ng palaki. Today, Helen has moved out of food poverty. Today, Helen has a little business. Today, Helen is now assisting other people. Assistant na siya ni Jodine sa pagpapahiram ng pera sa mga mahihirap na tao. One life changed. Not through dole out, but someone who's able to have a little business because 
of, a, of, of someone who says, I'm going to build a bridge. Pakisabi nga, bridge. Yun ang kailangan. Somebody who is able to say, ito ang bridge na kailangan. Ryan, at the age of 12, became a, someone who, who lives in the street. Actually, natutulog siya sa labas ng Radio Veritas. Age 14, naging... Alam mo yung, yung bata na nagsisniff ng rugby? Nakikita mo sa daan? Si Ryan yun. Tinatago niya yung rugby niya and he would sniff it every day. Again, he met the ministry of Jodine Sola. Jodine taught him welding, the skill. Today, he's a changed man. Ryan now is, is a welder. He's an assistant also of Jodine, helping and ministering to other street children. Another life changed because someone decided to build a bridge. Helma. Helma was a young girl, did well in school, grade school, high school. She wanted to go to college. Yung tatay niya, sinabihan siya na, hindi ka pwedeng mag-college, wala tayong pera. The father was a fish vendor. Not, not the, the one with the stall, hindi. They, they were so poor that the father could only go from one house to another selling fish. Helma was heartbroken. She really wanted to go to school. In fact, she wanted to go to UP. She heard that UP had a 6,000 peso tuition fee per semester. The father said, I cannot even afford that. 6,000 pesos per semester. It was fortunate that one of the customers of the father heard about Helma and introduced her to Ray Ortega, our friend, who runs a scholarship program. Helma today is a teacher in Poveda because of the help of Ray Ortega and his scholarship program. Helma was able to finish in UP cum laude. One life is changed because people have decided to build bridges.